Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. Back again, y'all. Look here. Now that everybody knows that uh, I got a podcast show, particularly at this facility, you know what I'm saying? I get people running up to me every day wanting me to do a show about them, you know, tell their story. You know, they put the angle on the spin on it, whatever the case may be, so that, you know, I'll be interested in it. And I always tell them, look, if this, if this is not true, I don't want to hear it. You know what I'm saying? And I do what I can to try to verify what they're saying and so on and so forth. But not too long ago, this young man that walked up to me and he was like, Joe, let me talk to you about what happened to me. You know what I'm saying? And why I'm back in the penitentiary, right? And I'm always interested in people that have gotten out and come back. I want to understand that uh, a whole lot better than I do. You know what I'm saying? Because I get a little aggressive with them when they come back. I'm like, man, I don't want to rap about that, man. You had a chance and you blew it. What is going on with you, right? But anyway, this guy was talking to me and it wasn't so much about the case. It was what he did before he got out the last time that led him to have to believe that he had to live a certain way. He had created a reputation, y'all, for himself. And when he got out, he found himself having to live up to that reputation. So that's what this show is going to be about because I know some people that have done exactly what this young man did and they're out there. And you may recognize, you know what I'm saying, some people through this story, right? So this is going to be a good one, y'all. So, you know, I hope you enjoy it. Check this out, y'all. It was his brother that got out. This has been years ago that he got out, right? He's back now. He's back now. But he got out some years ago, and before he got out, though, he, you know, whenever he, whenever he called home or wrote letters, went to visit, he put on like he was just that guy in here. You know, he, he was affiliated, but he was like very, very, very low on the totem pole. He had no pull. He was one of those brothers that they always used to hold all the pocket knives and the phones, and anybody that's ever been to prison, you know what I'm saying about that. If you've never been to prison, you don't understand that, let me explain that. Somebody that's affiliated that they use to do a lot of that kind of stuff is usually the, the send out, the ones that are trying to get favor, the ones that are just joining and trying to move up in the ranks and whatnot like that, right? So they got to take all the risk. And this is who this young brother was. This is this is how he did his time. Uh, his brothers would always have him holding all the pocket knives. If the police ever ran in on him, he had to take all the charges. So he took all the risk and got little, very little reward for it, other than just being accepted and patted on the back and saying, you solid. That's what he got. But to his family and friends that he talked to on the phone, that he visited, that he wrote and received letters from, he presented himself like he was this dude that was calling shots, making things happen. You feel what I'm saying? And it made him start to believe his own hype. But this is how it got him. This is how we got it. He ends up getting out of prison. And when he got out of prison, now all of these people, and some of the people in his hometown, he's from a small hometown, some of the people in his hometown, they thought he had moved up. And he's that dude, right? And that's another example of how poor the communication is between gang members. You know, they say that they got these pipelines where they know who's doing what and that and this and all this all kind of stuff. Don't believe the hype. In most cases, it's not like that. You feel what I'm saying? But anyway, his own uh, brothers in the gang thought that he was this dude as well, right? So when he gets out, they expect him to be a certain way. You know, you create this reputation about of being, you know, a shot caller, somebody that don't take no mess and would, uh, ready to go at the drop of a dime. You know what I'm saying? Stayed always on hype. He had to live up to that. So he gets out. And he's out with his brothers, and they're kicking it and all this and that. And he's he's putting on like he that dude. You know what I'm saying? And they're gravitating towards him, right? Like, yeah, man, he done been to the penitentiary. He know what's going on, and this, this, and that. And a lot of people confuse, you know what I'm saying, coming to the coming to the penitentiary with something good. Like it's almost a rite of passage when you live a certain lifestyle. That's crap. But anyway, but anyway. They were buying into it. They had drank the Kool-Aid. And the people in this town had drank the Kool-Aid, right? But anyway, they were out and about. 
and they went to the mall or some other place they were at. He was telling me, right? I think he said the mall. But anyway, it was somebody from a rival gang that he ran into that knew him in the penitentiary. And when he runs into them, they approach him like who he was in here. They knew that he really wasn't that dude. You feel what I'm saying? They didn't get disrespectful, but they didn't pay him the respect that was due somebody that would, you know, somebody that was uh, presenting himself in the way that he was, right? If he was really that dude, the whole conversation between him and that other person would have been different. So everybody around it, they're recognizing like, hold on, dude is not respecting who you are. So now all of a sudden, he leaves. The, the, the rival gang member dude leaves, right? And now he's stuck there with his brothers and they're still walking. They're like, man, why don't you do something? Why don't you say something? You know. So now he's starting to feel that crack has developed in his reputation. And now they might be able to see that he's not exactly who he's presenting himself to be. So he starts to get nervous. So he hatches the plot. He tells him, look, I'm going to take care of him tonight. I'm going to ride down on him and end him. That's just as simple as that with me. You know what I'm saying? So they were like, yeah, 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 that's what's up. That's what's up. You know, the homie going to take care of the beard and we riding with you. All this old kind of stuff. All of this old kind of crap. Right? So check this out. His mother, she's got a boyfriend, right? That's a real hard hitter. Grew up in the streets. Old head. Been to the penitentiary three, four times. But he the real deal Holyfield. He ain't playing with it. Right? So what do do when he go to the house? Because he ain't that hard hitter. He putting on. He don't even have a gun. He ain't got a pistol, y'all. But he's one of them dudes in the streets. Come on now. And he don't even want to ask his own guys for no pistol because they expect him to already have all that kind of stuff. You presenting yourself like this, you already read it all the time. So what he does, he goes back to the house. And he, he goes up in his mother's room and he gets, finds a stash where his mother's boyfriend keeps some of his guns. So he just grabs one of the guns. He's not really paying attention to which one. So he grabs one of the guns. Now check this out. Now he's on his way. He tell his homies he don't want them to go with him. You feel me? They ride in another car. He in the car by himself because he want to take care of the business. He's trying to get away. But the whole thing is he's spooked. He's nervous. He don't want them to see it. But he putting on like, y'all got this. Y'all ride in the other car because, you know, if something goes south, you know, it's just me. You know what I'm saying? I don't want y'all to get caught up in that. You know what I'm talking about? All this old real hard, tough talk that means absolutely nothing because that ain't that dude. He's not that dude. He ain't built that way. You feel what I'm saying? But he got to put on because they believe it because he did it. He made everybody in the streets believe that he was this dude. So now he's got to live up to this. So check this out. On the way there, as fate would have it, whoop, whoop, police pull up. They stop him. Just an old routine stop, right? Registration and driver's license. Boom, he present him with his stuff. Now, when you out on parole, you got a different card, right? You know what I'm saying? So they check him and they see, are you on parole? He was like, yeah, I'm on parole. So they said, can we search the car? Really, he didn't know what to say. He's like, yeah, I ain't doing nothing. So he got the gun in his waist. So he tried to flip the gun out. You know what I'm saying? As he getting out. Uh, they catch a gun. Get down. They got him. Lucky he didn't get shot and killed. You feel me? Lucky he didn't get shot and killed. They get the gun. They take him and arrest him. He's in jail. No bond. Possession of a handgun by a felon. So he's locked up. Well, while he's waiting at the jail to get transferred back to the prison, guess what happened? They ran the prints on the gun found other people's prints. Then they ran ballistics on the gun. And guess what? Three bodies. Three bodies on that gun. Three bodies on the gun. Now, you know, the police, they did a thorough job. This is what saved him from catching them bodies. They did a thorough job and realized that the time that these murders were committed, he was incarcerated. So he couldn't have done it. Well, guess who that falls back on? Mama's boyfriend. So they bump down and go on, go at him and go arrest him, right? Well, he finds a way out of it. Now, he's still on the streets. He's still with the mama. But he pissed. Because he's questioning her. How did he get my gun? 
She don't know what's going on. They arguing and fighting all the time because that's her son. But at the same time, she like, I don't know what's going on. She ain't understand it though. It's street life thing, right? So check this out. Dude get pissed. He still got clout. He make a phone call to the OGs inside the penitentiary. He said, look here, man. This is what I need done because I don't know what this boy going to do. And dude ain't trying to go back to the penitentiary because dude can't take it. So he tell him, he said, look here, this is what I need you to do. Now check this out, y'all. He's still living with dude mama. He's still with her. But hey, <laughs> it's street life. And if you ain't about that life, don't play no games. I'm trying to tell y'all now, don't play no games. So this is what he do. He tell them, he said, man, I need to send a message, man. I don't want y'all to kill him. I don't want y'all to kill him. I want you to fuck him. Let me get y'all 10 racks. Take care of that. Oh, they with that? They with that? Now, hold up now. Let me explain something to y'all now. I know y'all out there trying to figure out, say, wait a minute. These gang members, they on that? And let me tell y'all something. This ain't a rival group. These his homies. Say the rival group, these his homies. You feel me? For 10 racks? Oh, man. They greased up. They greased up. They bumped down on his six on them. Six of them, y'all. They running in and out of him like they making a movie, man. He ain't up screaming and hollering. Ain't nobody coming to his aid. Nobody coming to his aid. And the whole time they bumping him down and, and running up and down in him, they letting him know, keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. You played yourself. You deserve this. You bought this on yourself. Now, when he telling me this story, I'm leaning back. I'm looking at him. I'm like, man, wait a minute. This can't be true. I did a little research. Found out. Oh, yeah, it's real. That's one of the reasons that I was able to run into him. I ain't going to get into detail, but he wearing a diaper to this day. You feel me? He wearing a diaper to this day. Yeah. Going back and forth to the hospital at all time. Because they done tore something up in it. You understand what I'm saying? So he telling me this story. I said, why are you telling me this? He said, man, because the truth is, you know, I done got into the word. And I done gave my life to the most high. I said, I respect that. He said, but I realized, man, that if I wouldn't have been saying and doing and acting the way that I was, possibly none of this would have happened. I'm like, yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. So anyway, let me get back to the story. After they finished doing all this and that to him, right? He got to go to the doctor because he bleed. He bleed. Guess who get him to the clinic? The same brothers that just ran up and down in him. Now, they putting on real hard. They get him down downstairs. They tell the nurse, something's wrong with him. He bleeding. You know what I'm saying? We got to get him to the clinic. She tell him, she call out on the, on the yard, let him know we got one coming to the clinic with assistance, right? That let him know he's not going to be walking by himself. So the nurses is running out. They don't even call the medical code, but they coming out to meet him. So when they get over halfway there, the nurses are there, this and that, he bleeding. I'm talking about he put, he done put his jeans on, but he bleeding. He got poop and blood running all down him. Can't hold it. And the same dudes that did it with him, they with him. They putting on like, oh, boy, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Y'all help him. Y'all don't let nothing happen to my brother. Y'all better make sure he's straight. All of this, all of that, they putting on. He looking at them. They looking at him. He wondering what have I gotten myself into? These same people that say they love me just took me down through that and took my manhood from me. But these are the ones that say they love me. These are the ones that say they loved him, y'all. Now, he in the clinic. They stitch him up. They, they take him out to the hospital, bring him back. The hospital stitch him up. You know what I'm saying? Think about that. So he got the he got the bag on because he still got to be able to use the restroom. You know what I'm talking about? Still got to be able to go. But they done sold him up. Because they done ripped him. Six grown men ripped him. Like savages. Non-consensual. You understand what I'm trying to tell y'all? Hey, you say you about this life? You better not be. But they ripped him. Now look, 
Everybody know on the compound. Ain't no secrets. He come back to the compound wearing a diaper. Walking slow everywhere he go. They give him the little donut thing where he can, when he sit down on his bed, on the stool, on the toilet, so it won't hurt him. You know what I'm saying? After they done took the stitches out. Pain, man. He kept that bag on for a while, though. Because it was too painful for him. But when he was telling me the story, I got to thinking about all the guys that I know that have gotten out, presented themselves to be this hard hitter, and then they end up having to do what it is, you know, whatever it is that they found themselves involved in. Because they've created this reputation, this fake, phony, a lie that they have to live up to. And we all do that. We all do that. We present ourselves in a way to make us look better than who we are. We all have a high opinion of ourselves, but some of us lie, y'all. Some of us lie about who we are because our reputations mean more to us than truth. We have low self-esteem. So we want to be somebody that we're not. And when you're trying to be somebody that you're not, you forget the fact that you might have to live up to that person that you created to the crowd. And that's dangerous. That's dangerous. Because you can only be who you are. You should embrace who you are and love who you are. And if you can't love who you are, you might want to talk to somebody about that. Because don't nobody need to tell you if you love who you are or not. You already know the answer to that. Just one of those stories I wanted to drop on y'all, man. You know, I think that uh, it's one that you got plenty of lessons in. I hope that you enjoyed it, right? But this has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. And I say peace, y'all.